Let's pray. Father in heaven, great is thy faithfulness towards us, and we enter your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. You are so good to us. May we be found faithful in your sight. Revive us, reform us, we pray. Instruct us, encourage us on this pilgrim journey is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <music> Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge. Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey as we are journeying home. Safe to Serve International, those of you who are live with us, I greet you as strangers and pilgrims on this earth. And don't forget, this world is not a final home. For the rest of you who are joining us hereafter, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Let's get right into the crux of the matter. By the way, before I forget, at the close of this presentation, I have a very pertinent counsel to share with you. Please, please stay tuned for that. Let's turn our attention to Matthew chapter 24. And let me give you a simple statement of what's coming in the closing segment. You know, friends, we are told in a book called Selected Messages, book one, page 122, are we hoping for the whole church to be revived? That time shall never come. Stay tuned for those closing councils. Let's get right into it. Matthew 24 tells us, there shall be signs in the earth, the wars, not only wars overseas, but also wars among nations, racial wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, i.e. calamities. Then will come great persecution for God's commandment keeping people. That's Matthew 24, verse 6 to verse 9. Here's my point. Before a national Sunday law can be enforced, all those aforementioned things must get worse. And that is what we are told in the book, Great Controversy, page 589. These things are going to get worse. Great Controversy, page 590. Sun the rest because these things are going to get worse. Laudato Si, paragraph 237. And here's my point, my friends. There are going to be individuals, leaders among nations, talking about that they care for the poor, that they want to combat these calamities. But based on the word of God, many of them are the perpetrators of the wars, the instigators of the wars, the famines, the pestilences, the calamities. That is the point. May I give you a biblical precedence for that? Look at John chapter 12, verse 3 through verse number 7. The account of Judas Iscariot. He was there talking about as if he cared for the poor, but the Bible called him a thief and revealed his sinister agenda. And that's what we are told in the book, Great Controversy, page 589. The very ones who claim that they want to heal the wounds and woes of the world. They are the ones perpetrating these so-called emergencies, catastrophes, crises, disasters. And then they will have the platform to enact this agenda, the mark of the beast with persecution for God's commandment keeping people with the idea we cannot buy nor sell. All right, friends, with that in mind, I want to bring your attention very quickly 
to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. All right? And what we are going to see in no uncertain terms. There is a nightmare for liberty of conscience. Right now, friends, look at this. All right, look at the headline here. Washington Times, November 19, 2020. Headline says, the United Nations is using the COVID-19 to take over the world. What a startling headline. It's not surprising, though, for God's prophetic students. Look at what this goes on to say, my friends. We are well aware of the 17 goals, so-called to make the planet a better place for all. And they're using the pandemic to speed up the takeover of the world. Next, it goes on to say, watch carefully, friends. They're talking about, blue words, eradicating poverty. They want to care for the climate. But notice the red word says from the author of this piece, their policies are devilish. Next. The article goes on to say, their atrocious policies will crush out freedoms and trample upon liberty of conscience. Blue words. Welcome to a nightmare for American sovereignty. Welcome to a nightmare for liberty of conscience. The piece went on to say, Their goals, the deadline is 2030. The year 2030 is their deadline. It says, black words underlined. The clock is ticking away. So, the leaders, Popery, UN, their allies are actually stating use any crisis to bring about their goals to fruition. Red words, enter the coronavirus, enter opportunity. Next, it goes on to say, my friends, the UN Sustainable Goals, Development Goals, the agenda of Popery, notice what it says, my friends, is going to trample and nullify the principles enshrined in the U.S. Constitution, red words underlined, as well as to stamp out the God-given rights for the citizens, red words underlined. And the last two sentences say, blue words, watch carefully my friends, the UN's Sustainable Development Goals a.k.a. Great Reset, the Great Reset will nullify our freedoms. Yes, friends. And that's why we're told in Great Controversy, page 588, the policies from these draconian, contemptible leaders will trample upon liberty of conscience and volume 5, Testimonies for the Church, that wonderful book, page 451 says that they will tread upon our policies of principles of freedom. And then we may know the end is near. Is the end near? The clock is ticking. That's the point here, friends. Big picture. I want everyone to see the big picture. In order for a Sunday law to be enforced, my friends, they have to create more calamities. They have to make the citizens government dependent. So when the government stipulates policies, the people will be cursed to bow. They will see no other alternative. Look at this, my friends. To confirm what I just said and to augment what I just shared. The Great Reset. Let me tell you something because maybe you missed it. The Great Reset, aka the UN's SDG goals, 17 goals. Let me tell you something. These policies are going to make the citizens 
paupers. That's the only way they can force those policies upon us. That's the only way a mark of the beast can be enforced. Yes, make the citizens subservient to its leaders. The few elite. All right, look at this now, friends. Headline, November 24th, 2020, New Mexico governor shuts down grocery stores for two weeks. Imagine that. How many people have food for two weeks? Let's move on. There it is, my friends. A dozen grocery stores around the state have been forced to close for two weeks. Governor Michelle Grisham, red words, at a time when the state's New Mexico's residents are suffering from record high unemployment and food insecurity. That's the point, dear friends. That's the point. Take a listen to this. Mexico. We start with more COVID frustrations. A dozen grocery stores have had to close their doors because they've had employees test positive. That's causing problems for New Mexicans in certain parts of our state. One couple says they're COVID positive and they had to go shopping in person because the location that delivers got shut down. Here's Patrick Hayes. Friends, again, don't you miss the big picture because you have people who support both sides of the issue. Shut down the grocery stores. People support that. How dare you do so? Leave them open. How are we going to eat? How are we going to survive? We have no other alternative. People support those sentiments. Here's my point. The devil is elated. Why? He has people caught between, as the proverb says, between a rock and a hard place. And then... His Sunday rest by law agenda to bring back prosperity, temporal prosperity, can be enacted and also be accepted. That's the major point. I'm not here taking sides. Look at this. Why? As God's people, we should be prepared. Let me say it this way. It's beyond preparation. One more time. Reiteration. It's beyond preparation preparation we should have been prepared come on friends it's time look at this as we move forward clip number two under the governor's public health order grocery stores have to shut their doors for two weeks if they have four or more rapid responses within the last 14 days that's a problem for families in smaller cities and so you, you have people like us i'm sure there's others out there that are, are positive that they 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 have this illness, but they're going to have to eat. They're going to have to have fluids. They're going to have to have those things. And that's, that's what's troubling. That man and his wife. My friend, what if the mark of the beast were to be enforced right now? How many, when they hear, you won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to receive food or drink, bread or water, unless you bow. How many would not bow? even though they don't believe in the mark of the beast. I'm telling you, for a Sunday law to be enforced, those four things of Matthew 24 have to get worse. Racial wars, global wars, famines, pestilences, calamities. Look at this, clip number three live in southeast new mexico he says they both have COVID 19 and had to stand in line for groceries because the store that normally delivers was forced to shut down and the one that does curbside doesn't have openings until wednesday we we want people to stay in their house we want them to isolate but we're taking actions to to put them out on the street governor mm, 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 mm. imagine that now friends i'm going to play a clip so far you have seen one side of the issue people are livid because of the policies to close down these grocery stores and they can't eat, they can't buy, they cannot sell. And they were told to stay home. People who have contracted the virus are saying, we have to go out and shop. They're being told to go back home. Well, that's one side. Look at the other side now. The words from Governor Michelle Grisham from New Mexico. Listen to this. Then on the back end, I'll show you. We are at the place the devil designed us to be. Watch this. 
Michelle Lujan Grisham reaffirmed her stance earlier this week. You can't have a grocery store or another big box store that sells groceries if all of their employees or the vast majority of them have COVID. You can't open up, and that's the issue. Mm, so this this somewhat arbitrary and potentially capricious action that may not be well thought out is is going to exacerbate the exposure rate. There, there it is, friends, on both sides. You're seeing it now, friends. Do you know what we're told in Ministry of Healing? Page 183, look at the last sentence where it words, they are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. How can we do it if we allow the stores to be open? More people are going to get sick. If we close the stores, then they are going to be poverty. They're going to be starvation. There's going to be pauperism. Can you see it, friends? The devil knows exactly what he is doing. And the devil's clock is ticking. He knows. Revelation 12, verse 12. Satan knows that he has but a short time. Just as the UN, just as the papacy knows they have but a short time to deceive the world. And then comes their destruction. Get back to the quotation. It says... Red words, there are not many even among educators and statesmen who want, who want to help the crises in society. Blue words, second to last sentence, those who hold the reins of government, that represents mayors and governors, are unable to solve the problem of poverty. There it is, friends pauperism oh yes what will come next increasing crime here's my point it's beyond time for us to be prepared as god's bible believing christians so what is the work of solution what is the work of preparation there it is my friends next paragraph it's country living the five keys to survival I told you, friends, country living, conversion, I told you, having food on your property, ministry opportunity, there it is, industries, and lastly, number five, helping and sharing with others, the five keys for survival, I told you, look at this now, next clip as I close this segment moving forward the man says he has found someone in another city to bring his family groceries but he doesn't know what will happen if that town's grocery store shuts down meanwhile the state says if you do find yourself in a similar situation call 1-833-551-0518 is that not being government dependent they have to destroy independency independent thought number one and also being independent and not dependent upon the government for assistance if that if if my friends let me just say it this way we are in we're at the crossroads of a crisis that's the point i'm driving home so when i said at the genesis of this presentation uh, selected messages book one Page 122, if we are hoping to see the whole church revived, that time will never come. The majority of God's professed people will refuse to get ready. Don't follow them. You ask God for strength. You ask God for wisdom, resources to get ready, remain ready, help others to be ready. The majority are not getting ready. Don't watch them. I'm telling you, and don't wait on them to give you instructions. I'm talking about leaders within our churches because the majority of them don't care about these things. They believe uh, these things will come, these things will pass, and there's no mark of the beast coming. Does that make sense? It's beyond the work of preparation. All right, friends, I'm not sure what more I can say. Let's get back to this. The same article goes on to say, watch carefully, red words, a report 
came forth by the organization called Feeding America. Red words, listen to what it found. The report says that New Mexico was one of the worst food insecure states in the country. Are things getting better? Are things getting better? With that in mind, look at this other article. This is headline, demand surges at food banks as more than 50 million Americans, 50 million Americans, yes, face hunger just in 2020. This is from CBS News. Listen to this. We turn now to the growing struggle in America to feed our families. A survey by Feeding America found 40% of those who sought food donations during the pandemic never had to do so before. Here's C never had to do so before. May I ask you a question? Are things getting better or are things getting worse? <laughs> you answer that. It's the latter. Are you feeling also the financial crunch, pinch? It's going to get worse. It's going to be a financial knockdown. KO. It's coming. Because the instigators, the, um, the contemptible leaders of this world, they want to make the whole population government dependent. Look at this. Clip two. All right, y'all have a good Thanksgiving now. Out of work and out of food. I need turkey, I need... I want everyone to listen to this new term, not the new signs of the times. Oh, no, but the new lines of the times, meaning food lines. Listen. We turn... All right, y'all have a good Thanksgiving now. Out of work and out of food. I need turkey, I need meat. These massive giveaways in Denver, Miami, and Dallas have become the new lines of the times. Did you hear that, friends? The new lines of the times? Clip three, listen. Beyond the holiday, Feeding America projects more than 50 million Americans will have faced hunger in 2020, up from around 35 million before the pandemic. I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. The North Texas... Imagine that. Are things getting better or are things getting worse? Clip four. This food bank's Erica Yeager says they're serving 10 million meals a month. History tells us that we can expect to see this elevated need for at least the next two years. Happy Thanksgiving what what did she say history tells us you can hit rewind clip four listen friends they heard brandy glasgow lost her home health care job during the pandemic <laughs> and is scraping by as a seasonal worker for fedex as a mother you never want your kids to see you uh, worry or panic so it got a little hard and got a little questionable there did you have money in your bank account no did you have money in your bank account and what was the answer listen in texas more than two million kids are expected to go hungry this year a reality 17 year old michael glasgow is now facing right now i'm trying to uh, graduate and get a job so that'll help like with the bills and stuff <laughs> it's a wake-up call for a generation coming of age in the midst of a pandemic mm, 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 mm. And do you know what came to my mind? Is the statement in James chapter 5. First, this is the last days. James chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 3, speaks about this small group of elite rich men, popery, her allies, that will enslave the masses financially and every other way covering all aspects of life and verse number three says when you see this is the sign of the last days verse number four verse number five says the people now are going to be crying out they have no food they have no employment out of work out of food are we here is the sign of the last days and what does the Bible say next in verse number seven? 
God is about to usher in the second advent. The Bible says, my friends, it's time to receive the former rain and the latter rain. It's time. However, it also adds, I should say, in additionally, not however, in additionally, the Bible says God's faithful people are going to encounter a similar crisis as did Job. That's verse number 10 and verse number 11. Am I ready for that? What did Job go through in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2? Did God preserve his servant? My friend, it's beyond preparation time. We should have been prepared. I'm talking to myself. We are all in this together. As they would say, no malarkey. It's a life and death matter. Watch this. You talk about crisis. I'm not going to get into the minutia of what's happening in New York City with the Jewish synagogue, Hasidic Jews, defying the governor's uh, policies to not have a, a, a wedding service at a synagogue. They were fined. Let's see what's coming for God's people. Look at this, my friends. Let me hasten my footsteps. Look at that. New York City to levy $15,000 fine against a Brooklyn synagogue that held, as the governor said, an illegal wedding. Of course, at their synagogue. That happened. I heard the report. If Take a look at this, friends. Illegal. That happened. I heard the report. If that happened, it was a blatant disregard of the law. It's illegal. It was also disrespectful to uh, the people of New York. The law... No, friends, when I saw that, this is what came to my mind. Is there coming a time? Now, let's be responsible with this report. The law says no gathering in these churches. None whatsoever. All right? And this Jewish group defied the governor's law. All right. Let's move on. Is there coming a time when the mark of the beast is enforced? We will be told we cannot have church services on the sabbath what are god's people going to do then we're going to have sabbath worship in our homes wherever we can gather will they then label what we're doing holding sabbath services when when sunday becomes the law of the land as an illegal gathering talk to me yes are we going to be threatened as they are being threatened. Yes. Are we going to be fined. As they are supposedly. About to be fined in New York. Yes. Look at this my friends. Now. This is so fitting. Because Americans. Not us. Americans are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. And they say the time when they persecuted fled the old world and came to the new world america look at this statement gc 252 in the 17th century thousands of pastors were expelled from their positions the people were forbidden on pain of heavy fines imprisonment and banishment to attend any religious meetings except such as were sanctioned by the church. And of course, the church ruled the civil government. Those faithful souls who could not refrain from gathering to worship God were compelled to meet in dark alleys, obscure garrets at some seasons, in the woods at midnight. Is there coming a time we have to defy Government laws, yes. Many were banished to foreign lands. I wonder where some of them came. Many were driven across the ocean to America. 
and here laid the foundations of civil and religious liberty, which have been the bulwark and glory of this country. But what will America do very shortly? Mm -hmm. Speak as a dragon and trample upon liberty of conscience. As they said in a previous article during this presentation, it's going to be a nightmare scenario. Last sentence again. As in apostolic days, the apostles' persecution turned out to the furtherance of the gospel. So when the mark of the beast is enforced with persecution, what are God's faithful people to do? Cower in fear? Oh no. Oh no. You know what we need to be doing. We just read it, my friends. We just read it. So now, are we seeing preliminary policies trampling upon our liberties? So what are God's people to be found doing now? Being trepid? No, no, no. Cowering in fear? Oh no. You know exactly what we should be doing. The work of aggressive, effective evangelism. Well, that was passed. Look at what's coming in the near future. Page 607 of Great Controversy. Uh, first sentence. As the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. Red words. They will be threatened with fines and imprisonment to renounce their faith. Is that their coming, friends? Is that their coming? By the way, it's around the corner. Around the corner. So here are my words, friends. If you were waiting, I was going to read a statement here. I'm going to post this statement below. Well, let me leave this until midday power search tomorrow. Here's, here's my last statement. If we are waiting on our leaders to believe present truth, because the majority, not all, the majority despise the principles of present truth. If we are waiting for them to accept present truth, live present truth, dress, diet, music, education, worship, those principles of truth, as well as believing prophecies being fulfilled by current events. If you're waiting for them to accept, live, and teach and preach, and tell you about country living, talk about those five keys of survival, my friends, Save to Serve International and First Time Viewers, you will wait in vain. Acts of the Apostles, page 43. As it was, so it is and will be. Peter, urge home upon the convicted people. The fact that they had rejected Christ because they had been deceived by priests and rulers. And, red words, if they continued to look to these men for counsel and waited, waited for them to acknowledge Christ, acknowledge the one who is truth, acknowledge present truth before they dared to do so. They would never, never, they would never accept him who is truth. Never accept present truth. Are those points clear? Last two lines. These powerful men, though making a profession of godliness, were ambitious for earthly riches and glory. Last line. They were not willing to come to Christ to receive light. Blind leaders of the blind. Both shall fall in the ditch. All right. I'm going to close it right there. So much more to cover. But I want to respect your time. I know you're busy. And I don't want to give you too much. Father in heaven, send in your prayer request, my friends. The prayer team is waiting. Father in heaven, thank you for this midday power surge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the words, the startling words of rebuke and the gracious words of encouragement. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.